Remember when the UK was actually building a better future for everybody? Affordable homes, good jobs, a real sense of community. Then the 80s hit and things took a sharp turn. That is Britain embraced neoliberalism and it's been downhill for most of us ever since then. But hey, at least the rich got richer. Ever feel like you're constantly playing catch up? Student debt piling up, rent through the roof, finding a decent job feels impossible? We're bombarded with messages about hustling and side gigs, but even with all that, making ends meet, feel, making ends meet feels like a constant struggle. So how do we get here? We're going to unpack how the UK went from building a solid future for everybody to, well, this. We're going to deep dive into how ditching Keynesian's economy, economics back in the 80s set us up for failure and how those manufactured moral panics like the ones aimed at about trans people are keeping us distracted from the issues that really matter. Today, many people in the UK are struggling. Wages have stagnated and haven't kept up with the soaring cost of living. The price of everything from groceries to energy bills has skyrocketed, leaving many families struggling to make ends meet. Owning a home feels like a distant dream for many, as house prices continue to rise while wages remain stagnant. And our public services from healthcare to education are being stretched to breaking point due to years of underfunding and cuts. But it doesn't have to be this way. In the decades following World War II, the UK embraced Keynesian economics. This meant the government invested in public services, created jobs and supported working families. It was a time of growth and opportunity for many. This approach helped create a society where everybody had the chance to thrive and not just the wealthy. But now we're being bombarded with fear mongering about trans people especially trans kids. This old rebellion debate is a distraction tactic, plain and simple. Instead of focusing on the real problems facing society like poverty and inequality, we're being told to worry about who we use as which bathrooms. The rise of cloud capital, vast wealth and power concentrated in big tech, has created a new class of modern overlords. These entities control platforms that dominate our daily lives, leveraging this control to influence behavior and extract wealth. Much like feudal lords of the past, their priorities lie in cons consolidating power and enriching themselves with little regard to the broader well-being of society. To maintain their dominance, they often exploit social divisions and fuel moral panics, diverting attention from their unchecked influence. Think about it. Every time we use the internet, we're generating data that's collected and monetized by big tech. They track our every click, our every like, our every search. They know more about us than we know about ourselves. And they use this information to target us with ads to shape our opinions and influence our behaviour. This isn't just about making money from advertising. It's about controlling the flow of information and shaping the narrative that defines our society. Big tech has the power to amplify certain voices and suppress others. They can create echo chambers where we're only exposed to information that confirms our existing biases. And they can use their platform to manipulate public opinion and influence elections. So when we're bombarded with manufactured moral panics about trans people or immigrants or any other marginalised group, we need to ask ourselves who benefits from this distraction? Who's using this divisive rhetoric to consolidate our power and their wealth? The answer is clear. The UK wasn't always like this. We have a history of fighting for fairness, for looking out for each other. We built the NHS, created a decent social security safety net, and we know how to build a better society. But it's going to take all of us pushing for real change. Keynesian economics focuses on using government investment to boost the economy and create jobs. This means investing in, in infrastructure, education and social programmes that support working families. It means using government spending to stimulate demand during economic downturns. This approach can help address the issues that affect people most directly in the UK, like unemployment, poverty and a lack of opportunity. By investing in people and communities, we can create a more just and equitable society. And this is the kind of nurturing growth that will benefit everybody and not just the wealthy few.